All right, thanks for staying with us. Okay, so I'll start with you, NJ. What did you find for us in the news today? Oh, well, it was just, uh, well, this weekend was uh, October 1st, Independence Day, and it was just amazing to be at home and then hear a lot of noise outside, looking out my window, saw the four million match in Lagos, and then I heard also it happened in Benin, Calabar, Abuja last week. So it was... It was just exciting to mm. see how many people were on the streets. But then again, it got me thinking, even if you do a 4 million match, how many people have PVCs out of those 4 million? How many people, you know, I was here the last time when you said 1 point something million, you know, um, voters registration invalid. were invalid. Mm -hmm. So it also goes to um, show that even though we're showing this much support, you know, in the works, we should also take it back home, which is at the end of the day, make sure we get our PVCs and make sure we're out there to vote because it won't count if we're just marching. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it was very interesting, the whole streets, everything, and the chance to... It's just that it just shows how many people are actually tired and frustrated about the current situation of a country, and we just want change. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Chinelo, let me come to you. What was your story? Okay, so I saw today um, Asha suing Joe Boy over copyright infringements for 300 million naira. I mean, quite exorbitant, but yeah. And then, you know, I went back to listen to the song, and I realized, oh, it's um, a song she hasn't released yet. So I guess the story is that um, she recorded it, she hasn't put it out, and then maybe the producer thought, I don't know, maybe she wasn't going to need the song anymore. And then Baba decided to give the song to Joe Boy. <laughs> and so now, very nice song actually, Contour. It's called Contour. And now she's going to sue him for 300. I'd like to see how that Wait, I don't out. get it all. Why would you even give somebody something that has... I even thought maybe it was a liner that she... Because I didn't read the story. I thought yeah. it was a line from, from, from her song. That's what song. I thought too. So it's a, new, it's a song she had recorded and she had never used. Apparently. Ah, no, the, the money needs to be bigger so than, that. When, than that. When he released the song, <laughs> did he? was she still on the... No, no okay. reference to her whatsoever. But the song he just has been making waves go. around, right? Yeah. And then he just puts up something on his Instagram um, saying Asha has sued him for 300 million because he didn't give any credit to her. Yeah, so. Wow. Please, that money should increase. Ah, more than that. Ah, it's true, because that's intellectual property, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, copyright is a big issue. So there's a project I'm working on currently. We wanted to use one of Simi's song because it's linked to women, mm. you know, and all of that. The woman song. Yeah. You know, but when I just started getting all the, the headache around copyright and all of that, I just told somebody, please, create a new theme for song for us. For a long time, us. I didn't know it was a big deal. It until is. this, um, it is what's a big this guy's deal. name? Something huge. Yeah. Sabinus. Mm. Was, it's Sabinus, right? Yes. Mr. Funny, yeah. Um, when somebody, I think it was Gala, I don't know which company it was, I used it was, something. It was um, Friesland. It was Friesland, yes, right? Yes. Peak, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then I'm like, oh, right. So this thing is actually this. It's, it's big. a big deal. <sighs> and guess what has happened now? With the invent of, uh, what's it called? Um, um, streaming platforms like mm -hmm. Spotify, even on Reels. Mm -hmm. Have you not seen you videos that they tell you, you can't that you this, this thing has been blocked yeah. in certain areas yeah. because yeah. of copyright. So yeah. it's a big deal. People are paying attention because guess what? Content is king. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, this is how they get their bread and butter. So this is how they make money. So you can't just wake up and, and like, pick up. Mm. Ha, that money should be bigger than that. I'm telling you. <laughs> It's a lot of money. Million. She's been she's been kind she's, to him. It's a lot of money. Because you'll not try that again. Never. Right, maybe. <laughs> Let me come to your story. Okay. Um, I was able to find out that NDLEA went to VGC and one of the mansions they found 13 million pills <laughs> on Tramador. Again. My question the same is, VGC. How did it enter the country? Team. We've been asking the same questions. I mean, you have custom officers who are doing their jobs for normal cars and whatnot, yet this is still happening. And what is baffling is, I mean, some of the politicians that are... Wait, wait. Out is there. it the same VGC that they just bust the, the uh, meth, meth, yes. meth lab? Yes. Mm -hmm. This the one same VGC. Come, VGC, we need to be to I mean, the I mean, who would ever have mm. thought that VGC would be drug laws but no. i mean i guess at the same time it's also supposed to not be noticeable because see you're thinking uh vgc is for like old money people mm -hmm. why would you find such things there i mean it's very alarming and the rate at which people do drugs these days is very rampant i must yeah. say 
Yes, it's, it's almost like if you're not even doing drugs, what are you, are you even normal? <laughs> These days it's really, really rampant and it's very alarming. It's disturbing the age at which people are, you know, it's readily available, Absolutely. you know, to everybody these days and there's no control whatsoever. So, I mean, that's very disturbing for the country. That's really sad, though. <laughs> VGC, VGC. My story is your governor of Lagos State, Sangwolu, has said he's going to increase minimum wage. <laughs> I we found that really interesting. I said, what are the, what are the, like, do people really just not understand that these are the same rhetorics you see when yeah, elections, elections are, are around the corner yeah. i mean yes we understand that it is a big it is very important that we increase minimum wage we've been shouting about that <laughs> on this time. table for a very long time and i think it was edo state governor that had started it you know so when i saw the video of governor sonwolu today um telling the civil servants that you know there will be an increment of their salaries and all of that i said well I, while I compliment him, but why do you have to wait, wait to close time. to the elections? Is this like a ploy to, to get people to just continue to you know, vote you and all of that? But hey, this is a tactic they keep using all the time. The time. We are hoping that things might change this time around, that people do not yeah. fall victims for this kind of tactics. Because the truth is, if you check amongst every other state in Nigeria, Lagos State still has one of the biggest... IGR, right? Sure. Okay. And you would think that the welfare, I was saying to someone the other day that, for instance, if you're working in New York and you're working in other parts of the US, okay. because of the high cost of living in New York, the, their wage is, is also um, higher than the, the regular, the, other, the same counterparts in other parts of the states, right? So that is how we expect that a legal state will be. It's supposed to be like a model city. I was in Ogun State the other day and I was really appalled. You know, Ogun State is also recorded that it has the all the big industries in Nigeria. So That's it's a money, making. money making state. Yet I passed a road I thought I was going to pass out because I had never passed that road. Before. <laughs> like it was really, really like death waiting for you on the road, right? So I just imagine when when I see things like this, this is not governance. This is not. This is not what we expect our government to do. We expect our government to sit down and say, you know what, we are putting in systems in place. Whether I am here tomorrow, I'm not there tomorrow, you'll be able to thrive. So when I see things like this, I get a bit, you know, but hey, the, vo the people he's targeting are not people like me. Because if it is for me, if you like, increase it to one billion. It is what I will do that I will do. But hey, it keeps much. working, so that's why they that's keep using thing. it. We don't know how, how much. much. We didn't even know how much. You know, like she the said, increment was he could be 65 naira. He could be 60, 62 naira. <laughs> Andrea, <laughs> this <laughs> 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 so, oh, hey, yeah. hey, baby. That's the story. Yeah. So we'll take a break now. When we come back from the break, let's discuss spending money. Stay with us, we'll be right back. I won't necessarily transfer the money. See, I'm money that is money that is stopped. No, God, rob me. I won't necessarily transfer and do it. See, money, no, it's only 1500. 1500. Oh, 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 Please, who can give me a jet 2K here? <laughs> I'm telling you, so whether it's a medical emergency, a car breakdown, or a bust pipe, the unexpected can cause a strain on your budget and your daily routine. Planning can help you be better prepared for unexpected um, expenses, including knowing what options may help you budget during an emergency. Now, a budget is the first step to putting aside money towards the important things you need to save for. Without those guidelines, you might not discover where you're spending money and may even be saving it in ways that aren't optimal. So today we're discussing the impact of unplanned spending on your personal finance. And we're asking what are your thoughts on the video that you saw. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 8 one 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So, um...
recently, I think about last week, maybe Thursday or so, I can't remember now, I just decided to go on Netflix and just find something I would not normally watch. And I found a, vi a, a, a movie, I think it's called Get Smart With Money. That movie. Um, it was four people in the movie. They brought in experts. Get Smart With Money, yes. They brought in experts... So there was one that was really bad on credit card. She, was, she, had a, she had maxed all her credit card, very, very bad debt. There, there was one that was earning good income, but they had nothing to show for it. There was another one that was a fantastic athlete. He was earning money. He lost all the money because he was spending anyhow, you know, and, you know, and all of that. And I think the final lady was um, this one. She was a bit confused. She's an artist, but she's not been able to find herself. So she works as a waiter and all of that. So those four people were now put with different coaches right and the summary of all of those things was that you know the way um to really build income or wealth and all of that you must first of all find a way to block leakages right and just by cutting certain things off that they would do like go to eat out for dinner she will not like this. <laughs> no, you will not like this. <laughs> I, I, I have a recipe for Wait, don't worry. <laughs> you know, so just by going to dinner, instead of saying, oh, uh, Angie, let's go for a drink, you can decide to make the drink in your house. You know, all of those little, little things that might not be so big. That is a vivid explanation of what this guy did. So what he did was, for every time he got a call, I bet urgent 2K, I bet borrow me 1.5, all those kind of, you know, I bet if you, if you give me 1.5, if you give me 1K, he kept on keeping the money in the colo and see how much. So what I do not know about the video now is I don't know for how long he did it, but mm -hmm. these things are real. Saving just a thousand naira every day, just a thousand naira, that's about 365K in a year, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's actually the, in the long run, these little drops do actually make an impact on your income. But hey, luxury people will not agree with you. <laughs> but let me hear, let me hear your thoughts. Who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, well, I, I would say. Do you have any experience, first of all, with all these urgent 2K? Because they are everywhere. Well, I have a lot of, I have friends who who like to borrow, mm. and they're not borrowing because to, to pay back. Well, you have different levels of them all, I guess. You have the people who borrow and you're sure they will pay back. You have the people who want to borrow and you just say, do you know what, how much do you actually need? 10K. Okay, I have five. Go find five. Take five, go away, mm. you know. And you have the people who you just give and forget about the entire thing. Mm. Because you, you just don't want to stress yourself. It will probably cost more for you to, you know, follow up. But they're all, when you talk about, you know, you mentioned a couple of unplanned expenses that happens. But when you say, how does it, if you don't have a budget, then even those unplanned expenses seem to rile you up every time it comes up. Mm. But if you have a budget, then you can, if you budget your money, then you can say, okay, what is, from what is left, I can have miscellaneous. That's why, you know. You can save up emergency funds, Thank right? you. So you can call it miscellaneous. So there's a breakdown of your vehicle. Budget. So, because there are things that would always happen. Mm -hmm. You can lose your job and then your leaving situation becomes an issue. Your next rent, your next meal, your next car repairs and all that. There are so many things that can come up. Like just a couple of weeks ago, my, my elder sister had an accident mm -hmm. and it was unplanned. But it happens. And now you're down to either taking an Uber. That's an unplanned expense because mm -hmm. you had a car. All you needed to buy was, was petrol. Well. But now... At this point, you have to take an Uber. And Uber expenses is dependent on the location you're going. You understand? <laughs> so if I want to go to the mainland now, that's a lot of money. Mm. And surge and every... So all those are unplanned because you're, you're not even sure. You can have an average of how much you're going to spend, but you don't even know. So you can go out thinking you're going to spend 10000 you end up going to the ATM to get some more money. So mm. it's, uh, I think budgeting is a very good way of balancing your income with what you, you know, your lifestyle. Mm. And it's very important, even though you want to do luxury, you can be balancing it small, small. Luxuriously. <laughs> balancing luxury. Let me actually look for that. I'll come to you, Mary. Okay. Um, I mean, it's so where, first of all, when you saw that video, <laughs> did it hit home for you? <sighs> where do I start from? Okay, so you know, people say... See, instead of going to Susan's place, save up the money, instead of going to eat at 
wherever, make your rice at home. My mom is say something to us on Sundays. There's rice in the house, don't worry. We don't need to go to Mr. Big. Let's go home and eat the rice. I mean, I understand. But at the same time, sometimes, like Mary would just, Leave a little. Leave, leave. <laughs> just leave, a leave this life, you know. <laughs> but then, I mean, seriously. I mean, budgeting helps you to create boundaries with spending, right? But then they're just... And I'm living witness to this. Unexpected expenses. Has it hit you before? Last month, I thought my enemies were after me. Mm -hmm. From the generator to car. It just seemed like everything was happening. At the AC started leaking. Everything was just happening at the same time. So, I mean, these things happen. And I, I, I ended up spending money that I did not plan to spend, right? Does this mean that I'm poor with my finances? Maybe not necessarily. I mean, I can't. I like to buy things, but, you know. And that thing is debt as well. The truth about debt is that it's going to hold you captive. Mm. So for each time you owe money, anyone that comes in, you're literally subtracting it, right? So you would always be broke. Mm. I really, it's, it's, it's a sad reality. And the truth is, a whole lot of people are going through stuff like that. But then Sakpa is real. <laughs> You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a real thing. But then it doesn't mean that you shouldn't save. So I agree with that guy. I'm sure once, once, if you put that 1,000 there, you put that 500, you put that 200, at the end of the day, there's something I used to say to someone that you want to have, when this debt to December thing started, I said, okay, you want to have debt to December next day. But that's that 700 there every day from January. Because by maybe 5th, 6th of December, you already have enough money to go to all the shows and all the concerts. So yeah, saving is actually very important when it comes to mm. finances. Okay. The luxury woman. Let's hear your thoughts. <laughs> she says she has a solution for us. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, when, when you saw this video, did it, did it speak to you in any way? Um, to be honest, not necessarily. Um, saving is good. Um, I'm of the school of thought that how I do my own is I... I can spend, though, but not that you would not be able to afford your basics and not that I would go borrowing. Mm -hmm. I do not enjoy borrowing. I, I am so scared of it because I'd rather be broke. It's my money I know that I'm going through borrowing than borrowing to buy something. Mm -hmm. I do not agree for that one. But what I do and what has helped me is, like, I use the Piggy Vest app. So I lock funds away because mm. I know how I can be. So I know that, okay, this one, you can't touch it. The one you can touch, if you like, finish it. If you want to drink Gary, you will drink the Gary so at all. So we send you bill for that brand that you just finished. <laughs> Don't worry, go ahead. So, that's I mean, plan <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, that, that's, that's how it works for me. Mm. Um, saving, to be honest, I, I found it useful to be for the very first time when I quit my job. And I was so happy because a colleague of mine actually, you know, advised me that, uh, you know, what's in your savings, you know? And I really thought about it. I was like, okay, you know what? I know I like to lao lao, chop life. Okay, if you get this one, save half. Chop the half, blow the half, no mm. problem. But save the half. And for the first time, I needed money. And I actually had money. I was like, oh, shit. This is actually good, mm. you know? And it came, it, it, it came through for me. So... I'm of the school of thought that just be wise, even in your mm. going out. Mm. I'm not saying don't eat out. I'm not saying don't chop life. But do it in a wise way. Not that you don't have, you don't now have food to eat because you went to a restaurant to eat out dinner. It does not make sense now. Mm. It doesn't make sense. Mm. But, you know, it's like saving what you're saving. Put it aside, I mean completely, where you can't touch it. That's how me, I do mine, where you can't touch it. And then the remaining, please, live a little life you have, you know? <laughs> I mean, hey, okay. okay. Ah. So, so let, let's bring it back home because the current realities of Nigeria, um, you save up like 100,000 naira today. If you wanted to convert it to dollar, it's going to go to maybe I don't know how much now. <laughs> but if you left that money tomorrow, mm -hmm. what happens to that money? It, 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 depreciates. it depreciates. It's not going up, mm -hmm. right? That's the current reality of Nigeria. Sure. So as you are there, even in that savings that you're having, and that's why a lot of experts that we've had on the show would always say it's best to put the money to work let it go on investment Investments. right um so i would even advise people that even for those monies that you are saving once it's it is big enough it's it's got into a, a huge uh, or a, a sizable chunk move it into an investment uh what's it called 
for for something that you can invest in you know that can eventually yield something Which for you you know so because that's the current reality in nigeria but you see when i saw that video i just keep, the, what kept going through my head is that if an individual is having this much money because we've seen videos surface online you know and all of that you see beggars that have mm -hmm. 500,000 that they have gathered I'm from your, you. your tutu kobo. Do you understand? For me, it just, it just speaks so much that we have turned begging into, because you see this Ojen 2K, you go on your social media, you put a post, somebody will say, ha, ah, you're looking very beautiful, man, today, but please, can you send me 2K? Can you send me 1,005? Guess what? These people are actually lucrative. That's why they'll keep on doing it, keep on buying the da um, data <laughs> to keep begging online. So what is the smartest thing that you will do as an individual, right? Because we can't run away from people, mm -hmm. families, friends that will be in need and all of that. How do we now start to navigate those people, right? That would be the question. But let's go on a very quick break. When we come back from break, I also love to hear your stories of Ojen 2K <laughs> and how much it has become. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the topic the impact of unplanned spending on personal finance. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Way Show Africa um, with the hashtag Way Show. Um, our phone line is now open as well. Please, the number to call is 0702500 That's the number to call. 0702500749. Please oh, turn off the volume of the television set so we can hear ourselves, right? So I don't know how do we navigate people that make requests from us because I don't know how do we do that because there are some people you cannot say no to, but if you look at it in some circles, right? That people, those people that you cannot say no to, they take the chunk of your mm -hmm. income. So how do you go about that? <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't have that much people asking me for money, to be honest, <laughs> you know, but um, I think in my expenses, like we say, miscellaneous, there's what you can give and there's what you know would hurt you, mm. you know, so what you can give, I would help you out. If I know it's going to affect me, I don't have, I'm sorry. Mm. It's, it's as simple as that. Or I'm not going to sacrifice, I used to tell my mom, um, if your sister is fine first class and you are asking her for money and she says no to you, she's not going to reduce her first class ticket because she wants to give you money. It's not going to work. She has to satisfy herself first. It's what is left, it's the extra you have that you can give. Ah, her. Mary. <laughs> no, but it is the honest truth. It's the honest truth. I don't think. Mary, so you cannot sacrifice your first class ticket for me. I'm sorry, if that's my standard, I, I won't give you. That's just it. You know, there's what I can give mm. and there's what I cannot give. Mm. I wouldn't do what is more than me, to mm. be honest. That's how and I you just stand it. firm on that. Yes, I, I do have. I'm sorry. I actually feel bad because I, I actually feel like I'm, I'm such a goody tissue that, mm. you know, it will be pinching me. Uh, even when I passed those beggars, it took a lot for me mm -hmm. to say no to those roadside beggars. Mm. Like a whole lot. And every time I pass, I'm like, oh, Mary, you have the money now. Just give them. And I might say, me too, I need money, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking for who I'll ask for money, you know. It's painful, it hurts me a lot, but I'm sorry. If every time I'm going to pass a certain road, I, I know they're always there. They are, they, and they'll come, auntie, please, mm. auntie, please, auntie, please. And me, for me, the luxury babe I am, it's only 1,500 <laughs> you'll be carrying. So every minute, you're just dishing out 500, 1,000. Mm. Okay, now. What is left for you? Mm. As you are a big, even my mom will say, well done, oh, auntie. This, <laughs> this is the amount that you can give a bit for Mother you know. Christmas. <laughs> so just reduce. Actually, the one even that takes the most is, have you seen, if you calculate how much you spend for parking, hmm. when you go out wow. to park your cars, hmm. now they've increased this. If it's no. going from 1,000 to 2,000, say, hmm. ah, auntie, it's 2,000. Because I go out in the night, and I'm just like, if I actually calculate how much two two thousand pay for parking, these people don't own this space, so 
No, yeah, they just they make him protect So that's what I'm... So now you are hitting the nail where I want you to hit it. Because you think this money is not... Is nothing. Is nothing. But, it means but no, imagine if we took a journal, hmm. right? Let's say starting from today, every unplanned expense... So it's different to... If I said I was going to the supermarket... Because again, part of what the, the lesson that some of the people in that um, movie I talked about, mm -hmm. part of the lessons that they learned, right, was that, you know... So for, for some, when they say they are going to go and buy toothpick in the supermarket, they end up buying toothpick and one for more inside. You nice. understand? Nice. You know? So you always add. So all of those unplanned things are the things that they are just trying to pay our, um, bring our attention to. Imagine if you begin to jot those unplanned expenses. Do you know how much that can eventually come to at the end of the month, at the end of the year? It's a huge part of our money. And that's what you just said now, Mary. You go to different, I mean, you hang out. Mm -hmm. Ah, madam, hey, we hail mm -hmm. you. You give her a 2K. So I had 50,000 naira mint in my bag. And I can bet you for free. In fact, the last day I was checking, <laughs> because I was in Egypt where I will not see the money. The last day I was checking and checking inside the bag, guess what I brought her? It was the paper wrap of the, of the money. Because the money had finished. This one will come and see this one. You give him 500. This one will come and see that one. You give him 500. Like that. Before you say Jack, the money is finished. That's how bad these unplanned expenses can be on our income. But you wanted to say something, NJ? No, you're not. <laughs> Mary, Mary actually hit the nail on the head because really, you can't, when it comes to when to say no, you have to learn it. If not, you go broke. So, I don't have a problem with giving. Mm. I give when, you know, there's a feeling that comes with it. So, I do give. But at a point in time, you have to actually be able to say no. Mm. Especially the older you're getting. When we were younger, those monies were like lollipop. For lollipop. Now, those monies are for car repairs, rent. So, you can be stuck outside your house. Mm. And... Especially when you now start hearing what people do. Like you said, a lot of people are turning the borrowing system into a savings. On it's their a business. Own. It's into a business. Mm. So it means that you're funding someone else's lifestyle and someone else's decision to be lazy and not do anything. Mm. So I'm suffering. So at that point, when I realize that I've been taken for a fool or for a ride, it makes you take more, um, you know, more conscious um, decisions. decisions to actually learn how to say no a bit more often. I like Mary. Ha! Mary will be my new best friend. You know she take up and say, no, I cannot up. sacrifice my business. Look at me. No, I, I love, I love the way she said it. I cannot it. sacrifice my business class. I'm sorry. If that's my standard. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I always yeah. used to stand because for for a long time, my mom would say, I have this person has money. I say, did you work for the money with the person? Hmm. If they want to buy champagne and blow it there, it's their money. You go and make your own money. Mm. They are not going to sacrifice their lifestyle to accommodate you. It just it's just not gonna work. Mm. You know. And I'm sorry go to ahead. Shot. Um for me, like I said, the putting bulk money aside works. Mm. So you receive your salary, take out that big chunk that you know that okay, this is what I'm gonna save. Mm -hmm. Or someone sends you money, unexpected money, you divide it into half, take the half. Please, but have fun with yourself with the remaining half. Enjoy your life. Ask, but just know that there's something in the reserve. Bad as you bad, or you didn't finish everything. Hmm. And you'll be okay. You'll be all right. Let me know. Children have been <laughs> wanting to talk. <laughs> I wish I could be like Mary and just say no, and I mean outrightly, mm. because it's a struggle. You know, well, I won't say it's kindness. Sometimes it's just that... Okay, you don't want this person to think that you don't want to help. I mean, that's for me, though. <laughs> See if you look on Mary's face. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning to say, no, I can't do this for you at this point in time. I can't help you out with this situation. And I think it helps, that's the truth, because at the end of the day, you just put yourself into trouble, and those people just be in their houses chilling. Mm -hmm. And then you are the one that will end up being... But do you think it's broke. an ego thing, though? Let's, let's bring it home a bit. Do you think it's an ego thing if somebody comes to meet you because you see, the thing is, the sad thing about people, they perceive. Mm. So I've seen you, I've sized you, nice hair, nice jewelry and everything. And I perceive you have money. So based on that, I now come to you and say, ah, please, I need something. But you don't even know what is it in the person's bank account. So the person on the other end, is it an ego thing? The person says, ah, no, after I've looked like this, I have to, you have to shake body. Mm. Because it's not like you really have to give. 
But because you don't you want to say face, you want to be like, oh yes, make it no you be make like it no be like say, you know. So how do you then balance it? Because some people truly, genuinely, they look good, but they don't have the money, you know. And I can talk for my experience. No lies, <laughs> no lies at all. I mean, today I went somewhere with my friend. Um, okay, went to buy small chops somewhere in Lekki Phase One. And just as I got out of the car, this guy came to me and said, "And see, please, I just came into town and I have ulcer, uh -uh. and I need someone, you know." And I'm like, "You have ulcer? And I have ulcer too." Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my tummy is actually hurting me. That's why I'm going to buy food, you know. Some, but at the same time, I looked again. I have to convince myself. Chin, you don't have. To, you actually don't have to give this guy money because what is it to say that he actually even has the ulcer he's talking about? Only for us to buy the small chops and come out. And we saw Baba playing outside. He was apparent. That's what he does for a living mm. in that space. And then he said to me, okay, maybe next time when you come. I said, but well, you sounded like you just needed help right now. You so this is what you do. You so that means you always have this also. And I just drove off like. But then, you know, there are other situations where, okay, so for example, you go somewhere or you're at an event with your friends, for example. And then things happen, you buy stuff, whatever. And then two days later, somebody reach out, reaches out to you to say, oh, Chino, please, I need 2K. Please, can you send me 2K? At that point, if you say no, it's like, uh-uh. But we're we not, you. you know, <laughs> where we know we are. Two days ago. Where we know we are. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I know, but that's the spirit we're praying for now, that God should help us mm. so that we're able to say no in those kind of mm. situations. It, it right? takes a lot of willpower, I must say, mm. you know, because I... I, I battle with it as much as, you know, I, I bone my face to say it. I battle with it. It's painful sometimes when you say no. And guess what? Even the ones you've been doing, they will now take you for granted. Mm. And you're just like, so what's the point? Why mm. was I even giving you in the first point. place, you know? Because you think, um, I had this gate man. And I used to think, I, I, almost mm -hmm. every day you're drive, I'm driving out. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, I, I just tip in 1K. 1K. And I, one day, I, and I'm doing this because I expect that if I come back from work, you're going to help me carry my things. You're going to wash my car. Mm. And I notice that you're not doing it. So I'm like, okay, now I, I'm the fool here, right? I'm the one that you're saying free 1K, just <coughs> chopping it, and you're not saying anything. <coughs> and, but then I have to stop. Mm -hmm. I had to stop because the guy was really, really misbehaving. Like, really, really misbehaving. And I would burn my face and pass. It's your job. They're paying <coughs> salary. Open the gates for me and let me go. I'll carry my things inside. I have hand. I, don't, don't do anything for me. I'll do it myself. I mean. And you keep it moving. Mm. So, um, I was with a couple of friends over the weekend. We were talking about big meeting and labor. Right? Is it possible that some of these things are also tied to, you know, that we've lost that, res that word called dignity in labor? Because if I applied to be a security guard, I applied to do a job, and I, I'm expected to do my job and get paid at the end of the day. Or is it that because of the poor state of the economy, that's what has resulted into this? Because now, a lot of people just expect that you have money, and because they are in a certain um, position or a certain status from you and all of that. They just, just expect that, naturally. You know, and it cuts out because even me, there are some people I'm expecting money from. I will not just like, ah, <laughs> I will look at, I will look at you. Urgent, 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 on social media, they are there. <laughs> Physically, they are there. You know, no, you see them going into stores, right? As they see you buying, you yeah. know, they are yeah. watching yeah. and they come and meet you that, hey, please help me with this and all of that. So people are actually monitoring the, your spend and now believing that, okay, they should, should be, be part of that. So I think I like where Mary landed this thing, really. We must just, we must grow that thick skin and just say, yeah. let's take some comments because we have a lot now. Angie, you want to start? Sure, why not? That's it. Ah, what happened? The phone is not open. Yeah. <laughs> he does not recognize yeah, the glasses. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe I'm there. Okay, all right. Let me so check. Go ahead. Okay, okay, it's open. Okay, good evening, ladies. Good to see mostly new faces today. Thank you. 
<laughs> Budgeting is really a very good way to go now. I had a family friend that was working in a multinational company, company then. I lived with their family during my youth service year. He had a notebook on their dining table where he writes down his daily expenses as little as 15 naira granuts. We used to laugh over it then. As for me, I don't do WhatsApp calls, but now I do it a lot. I work hybrid, so I buy data most times when I work from home. I had to switch over to a service provider that gives free call cards when I buy data. Correct. I no longer use a driver to work, uh -huh. so I drive myself now wow. because I have flexible work hours. Mm -hmm. I've made some adjustments in spending in my home, and it has helped us to embark on a big project without borrowing. If I've been this way years back, I would have been able to achieve so much. I'm enjoying it, and I'm really disciplined as I give when it's necessary, and I don't bother about lazy people again. Thanks, BC. Oh, thank you, BC. Thank Such, you so much, BC. So, thank that's you. Encouragement to us I'm all. telling you, no, but see, true. Ah. No, it's the truth. if I knew what I know now, no. if we so I was an so you. so there there was a lady on that uh, part of that movie. She's an emotional buyer. I am an emotional buyer. Mm. So then, many years ago, when I'm upset like this, I would just go, I go and buy handbag, buy shoe, buy this. You know, like. It was like a taboo for money to be in my account. Like, if I'm upset, if I'm angry, I just go shopping. You know? But now, fuck back. Real luxury is emotional. I'm sorry, but I can't really help you guys on this. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I appeal to my clients. Emotions, you know, yes. You know, you're there for the hello, sir. How are you? Every day. And this will make you like, feel. You know what? Hey, what do you even have new in your store? <laughs> you know? So. Well, can you. I say something? I feel like in this country, we're so used to tipping. Mm. There's a good and a, the bad side out of it. Because you see that 2K now, if something should happen to your car when you come outside, you are going to be angry. Those angry boys will not mm -hmm. fight for you. So it's, it's, you can't even know where to draw the <laughs> line. Because as annoying as it is, some of them are yeah, useful to you. You, you see, last night they stopped you. Maybe this you did, don't give a definition. Maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe you did something wrong. You know that ah, you can bribe your way through now. But everybody's against bribery and corruption, right? <laughs> but it helps us to come out of some trouble. Just know where to draw the. No, line. but I don't even think for last night. You know, somebody actually explained something to me the other day, and he said something. He said, "Uwa." When you get to a point in your life where you have to off, where they are demanding a bribe, then you have failed as a person. What you should do is you keep on wetting the ground. He brought scripture also from the Bible to back it. There is a way to keep on wetting the ground. Like, without them asking, send gifts, send this and all of that. When an opportunity now comes that you need something from them, nobody, you understand, will demand a bribe from you. But so you when I saw that, I said, ah, it makes ground. sense. Is it? Wetting the ground. That's is what I'm saying. Is the urgent 2K? Uh -huh. But let's take some calls <laughs> <laughs> on this engine. <laughs> it's the urgent 2K. Do you have your choice? So, yes. Wow. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Good evening, ladies. Your money is your hard end and you're in control of it. However, remember, no one pays your bills for you. Nothing wrong doing charity or lending money, but do it wisely. Most people that come to borrow from you might be playing on your intelligence and not paying back by pretending to have forgotten. Mm. Yeah. If you want to ask, ask. Don't borrow. Don't say you are going to borrow and the, not, give uh, not give back. That's Absolutely. the one that I don't like. Yeah. Just Absolutely. ask for the money in peace mm -hmm. and let me give you and forget about it. Absolutely. Uh, okay. We have a caller. Sorry, one minute. Um, Loma from Abia State. <laughs> Good evening, good evening, beautiful ladies. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, this is Loma from other states. Go ahead. Um, uh, uh, in your your topic today, impact of employee spending on personal finance. Yeah. See, if any man, any woman, any boy, any girl embark on unplanned spending, before you know it, will go borrowing. You will end up being a borrower because this unplanned spending has cost me a very, it has cost me something that made me to cry in life mm. because by now I'm supposed to be somewhere in terms of acquiring something meaningful. But you too, unplanned, when you see this one, you go after it, you see this one, you go after it. At the end of the day, you, you, you become, somebody will become broke. So I'm using this opportunity to tell people, 
Please curtail your unplanned spending. Otherwise, your account will become worse. Thank ah, you very much. You. <laughs> Thank you, Loma. But you know, what he's saying is true. So another um, principle one finance person had taught me was, you know, what you should do is every month, the way you have emergency spend, also have um, a savings that you keep aside for help and if you want to do charity and all of that. So what you're doing is, as people come, it's first come, first serve basis, you keep on giving. So once that account exhausted. is exhausted for the month, you are done. You can't go and touch from any other part of the savings. So if you really are charitable at heart and you want to give, right, you can set aside. But not the one that you, so you, it's still then planned. Because it means that every month you are said, okay, I will not go beyond maybe 50K for all those uh, Jekuje, people that come to meet you say, okay, please borrow me this or give me this. I never chop. I've been hungry since two weeks ago. You know, like that. So those kinds of un unplanned spending, you can actually save up for that. But again, all of these things is also dependent on your income because now yeah. um, expenses are on the rise. Thank now, I have bills to pay. You know, I have monthly bills. I have salaries. I have all, all the expenses are on the rise. I've been battling whether to employ a driver or not employ a driver. The driver has come, I told him, hold on first, you know, and all of that. Because I'm just thinking, will it be worth it at the end of the day, the, the money that I'm spending? And Because I'm not, most of my work now are now fully remote, right? Mm -hmm. So what will it, how would that measure up for me? So that's why when BC said she cut down money. on her driver and all of that, I could relate with it. Because that money, you might think is small money, but if you kept that money aside and you were saving it, trust me, or you invested it in something, it would have yielded a lot more. But let's take more comments, comments. Then we go. Um, this says uh, poverty is man made, it's not natural. Self discipline in spending is the number one trait you and I need to accomplish goals and leaves us with suitable long term success in all aspects of life. There is always a price to pay when you can't save wisely. This is from Bobby Kennedy from, from Jalingo. Jalingo. Thank Taraba. you, Bobby Kennedy. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Ways. Daniel, we've missed you. Impact of unplanned spending on personal finance. Give, giving is very good, but it has to be done with wisdom and care. You can only give when it is necessary. My dear beautiful sister Mary said it all. <laughs> you must learn how to say no. You cannot give what you do not have. Discipline should be included in giving. If you keep on giving all the time, there will definitely be a repercussion and you will be filled with regrets. My dear beautiful sisters, Mary and Chinelo, you look beautiful and you look beautiful and good looking. God bless you. <laughs> My name is Daniel Elo, your ways regular fan. Sister mm -hmm. Daniel Elo has welcomed Sister Mary and, and Sister, Sister Chinelo <laughs> <laughs> to the team. But hey, ladies, I mean, I think we've had a fantastic conversation. Yes, we yeah. apologize. We hear that... Um, our audio was a bit ratchy today. We'll try to fix that. Um, but we had a fantastic conversation. If yeah, for anything yeah. I have learned, Mary is my new best friend. She's going to teach me facts. how to say no. <laughs> and how to chop life while saying no. You should <laughs> have a master class. I'm telling you, you should have a master class. Chop life. Well, you have chop to one. And have you actually noticed that <laughs> if you actually don't, sometimes, yeah, we always say this saving. But when you don't now actually even... Like something always comes to take off the money. Yeah. So why not? Something actually, why not always leave? comes to take off the money. So let us let it be that it is me that took it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. We had a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Chinelo, Mary, and NJ. Okay. All right. So before we go, do and show you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, all Bobo at Wish <laughs> Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, this quote went below the belt. So if you have a master's degree in making money, but uh, uh, but <laughs> you will still end up broke if you have a PhD in spending it. Ah, oh, deep. <sighs> so you have to learn how to invest your money. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. to bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>